I bought a bike flashlight for around 35 euros from Sigma. It served me well for some time, then it just stopped working. And instead of sending it back and getting a new one, I said to myself, I'm an engineer, I can fix it by myself. It can't be that hard. And that is what I did. The beauty of repairing something is that you don't really know what is the problem before you disassemble the device. It can be some easy fix like a wire breaking due to vibrations or some resistor burned. But if it's a problem with some integrated circuit, it can be a pain in the ass. So let's hope it's an easy fix. So let's look inside. Because the device is designed to be used in harsh conditions like rain, it is properly sealed. And the easiest way to open it is to crack the case like a nut from all sides using a vise. In such case, the glue that holds two pieces together will peel off and the device can be opened. But whoops, I don't have any vise in my flat. Yeah, so I just used a screwdriver to crack it only from one side, which created this ugly hole in the case. But don't worry, don't worry, that's an easy fix, I know how to seal it back properly and we'll show it later. Let's now focus on the problem. Inside we can see lithium polymer battery with a nominal voltage of 3.7 volts and a capacity of 1500 mAh. Overall, I like how the device looks from the inside. I really wish everybody used black PCBs instead of green ones, which are less attractive. Now let's disassemble it a little bit farther to see all the device without a case. So here we can see LED, which is soldered to another PCB. LED goes inside this other piece of case, which has a light diffuser. It is worth paying attention that LED is soldered to a special board, which is made from aluminum. Basically it works like a radiator, cause LED during its work produces a hell of a lot of heat. And it's a common misconception to think that LEDs are 100% efficient and do not produce any heat. They do, and they do a lot. For example, let's just look at the numbers of luminous efficiency of different light sources, cause I believe that is important. So how can we understand these numbers? Luminous efficiency shows how efficient electrical energy is transformed into a visible light that our eye can absorb. As you may know, human eyes can see a range from 400 to 700 nanometers, but most sources emit waves in a much wider range, which eyes cannot see. So basically all we cannot see is just a waste of energy. So for example, the champion in being inefficient is an incandescent light bulb with an efficiency of 3% at maximum. Basically, that means that other 97% are transferred into radiation that we cannot see. Infrared radiation. And if we look at the spectrum produced by the incandescent light bulb, we can see why it heats that much. The visible range has a really low intensity, whereas the infrared spectrum over 700 nanometers has a much higher intensity. But if you look at LED spectrum, it's different. As you can see, most of it lies in the range of visible spectrum. However, nothing is ideal, which is represented by numbers. So for LEDs, luminous efficiency lays in the range of 15% to around 30% for the most modern diets. So basically, efficiency of all LEDs is not even close to 50%, which is sad truth, but it is what it is. Nevertheless, it is much better than an incandescent light bulb. Okay, it was really long lyrical digression to explain why LED is soldered to aluminum PCB. But if you want to read more about the topic, I'm gonna put all links for the table and all other info in the description. Now let's just try to find a problem why this flashlight doesn't work. And I think I see the problem. I'm not quite sure, but the battery shouldn't be swollen like that. Just to fast check it, let's measure its voltage. Yeah, 0.1 volts doesn't look good. Let's remove the battery and check whether the board works by itself if it's powered through a USB. And it is, the indication works, LED works. So in order to fix it, I just need to buy a new battery and replace it, which I will do of course. But before doing that and sealing the case, I also like to see how this flashlight works at all from an electronics point of view. It's like killing two birds with one stone. I fix the device and learn something new about electronics. So we can see that there are several integrated circuits, button, indication and some passive components. And all this scheme can be divided into several parts. Circuit responsible for battery charging, LED driver and brain IC that manages button and sensor and correspondingly sends signals to the LED driver. Let's start with the battery management circuit. It is based on a TP4056 IC from some Chinese company. The connection scheme looks like this. The battery is charged with a constant current, constant voltage profile, which is pretty standard. 
By the way, you can copy scheme straight ahead from the datasheet and use it in your projects. Nothing complicated at all. All components values are mentioned. The ones that are not mentioned you can easily calculate from the formulas in datasheet. Really, that's a simple circuit to use. Next IC used in the device is LN2401, which is a LED driver. And again, scheme for its connection is mentioned in the datasheet. For example, if there is no need for LED brightness control, circuit looks pretty simple and has only four external components. However, in the case of the Sigma flashlight, brightness is regulated. So another circuit is used to change the brightness in different modes, which looks like this. And the working principle is, again, really simple. This resistor and capacitor work as an integrator, which converts PWM signal into DC voltage on a capacitor. As a result, voltage on a VD pin is controlled by the duty cycle of the PWM signal. And this voltage, according to Kirchhoff's law, is added to the one that goes from this sense resistor. As a result, by increasing PWM duty cycle, lower voltage at our set is needed to trigger inner comparator. Which means lower current through the LED. So, higher duty cycle, lower current. And vice versa. If you didn't understand the word, some laws, voltage dividers and comparator, just forget it and use the formula that is in datasheet. So using this simple formula you can easily calculate all the resistors according to the current you need and parameters of the integrator are in another table. Easy peasy! By the way, this driver is based on a buck converter topology and works on a 1.4 MHz frequency, which allows making it really really small. Last but not least I see is this controller, functions of which are to read pattern values, control some indication, check illumination and according to that data control LED brightness. And as I said earlier, to control LED brightness a PWM signal should be generated. So this IC should be able to do all this. In general this exact flashlight has three modes. Full brightness, low brightness and brightness control using phototransistor mode. Obviously that regimes are changed by button presses. And here is how the circuit works together. These two components serve to fix contact bouncing. Contact bouncing occurs for a short time at the moment the button is pressed and can lead to a false button positives. Which is obviously bad. And this parallel capacitor acts as an integrator for that noise. As a result, button presses can be read correctly. Component responsible for automatic brightness control is this phototransistor. You can think of it as a component that changes its resistance when light hits it. So basically, when the weather is sunny, illuminance is high and its resistance decreases. As a result, voltage at this point decreases, which can be easily detected by the controller. In reality, I have no idea which exact controller they use here, cause it has no marking on it. I don't even know if it's a microcontroller or just a specific IC made specifically for a flashlight. However, I'm sure that all these functions can be realized using simplest Atini MCU. Atini MCU is really easy to program, relatively cheap to buy and there are a lot of them on the market. If you just look what we can buy nowadays only for 50 cents, it's just crazy. So for this task, Atini has required ADC, general purpose input-output pins to control LED and two PWM channels. I believe that's more than enough for this flashlight. So as you can see, flashlight consists of several pretty simple circuits connected together. But as you may remember, one of the main parts is still missing. Yep, I'm talking about the battery. I couldn't find exact same battery with a proper size that would fit into the case. So I bought one with a little bit lower capacity. But I'm sure it's not a problem. Flashlight will work. A little bit less on one charge, but at least will work. So after soldering, before assembling it together, I checked if everything worked correctly. And good for me that it did. Afterwards, I glued the battery to the case to protect it against vibrations. Because I didn't want to wait till it gets fully dry, so secured it additionally with tape and continued assembling. Now is the most important part. To secure the device from moisture, case needs to be sealed. But if you remember, there is a hole in it, which I made. So I decided to use double component epoxy and simple CA glue. Yeah, it would have been better if the epoxy were black, but nothing is ideal in this world. Eventually, it doesn't look like a brand new one, but it works, so I consider mission is accomplished. 
Also, you learned something new today, how the circuit works and maybe you can use different IC I showed you today in your other projects. So if you liked the video, don't forget to press like, comment and check other videos, they are also interesting and informative.